On March 30, 1972, the People's Army of Vietnam, a regular North Vietnamese troop, would begin a brutal offensive that would aim to put an end to the tortuous war conflict that had been whipping and dividing their country for 17 years, the Vietnam War. The objective of the Northern forces was not only to irreparably damage the Army of the Republic of Vietnam and the U.S. troops involved in the conflict, but also to obtain a profitable position to negotiate in the Paris Peace Accords. The operation baptized by the American people as the Easter Offensive, and known in South Vietnamese literature as the Burning Red Summer, was a direct and fierce advance by different fronts that threatened to end the conflict three years earlier. To understand this battle in detail, we must take into account some events prior to it. For starters, this was not the first attempt by the Northern Army to rush into South Vietnam. Just four years earlier, in February 1968, the Tet Offensive took place, which consisted of more than 86,000 troops invading 36 of the southern provincial capitals and 64 of the district capitals. The advance ended up being a serious blow to the Viet Cong, who suffered the loss of both troops and resources. The defense of the southern territory by the Army of the Republic of Vietnam and the Americans seemed at first a victory for them. But the more than 4,000 casualties in the U.S. Army accentuated the mistrust and negative attitude of the American people towards the government and the country's presence in the conflict. For this same reason, after the Tet Offensive, the U.S. settlement in the Southeast Asian country began to slowly decline. The slow retreat of these troops was not ignored by the Northern Army. And, in March 1972, General Vo Nguyen Giap decided to throw almost all the forces in his army into battle, in order to end the war and unify Vietnam once and for all. Richard Nixon, the President of the United States at the time, sought the Vietnamization of the struggle. This consisted of arming, training and supplying the southern forces so that they could maintain the conflict independently. But the plan of the American head of state did not bear fruit due to the slow decrease in the economic support that the United States sent to its ally. The lack not only of capital, but of resources as basic as ammunition, which became scarce after the U.S. withdrawal, was leaving the southern side unprotected. Observing this, the Northern High Command concluded that the time was right to attack. Faced with the gradual withdrawal of the Americans, the impossibility of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam to fend for itself and the assumption that the Southern people would support the overthrow of President Nguyen Van Thieu, all the cards seemed to be in favor of the Northerners. The offensive consisted of three different fronts where the infantry troops were complemented by artillery regiments and a large presence of armored weapons. First, the North Vietnamese attacked the demilitarized zone, advancing to capture the city of Quang Tri, before moving south in an attempt to seize Hue, the former imperial capital. One of the causes of this defeat by the South Vietnamese was due to the fact that, a year earlier, a large part of the forces that were in charge of defending the limits of Quang Tri had been replaced with inexperienced troops, which ended up fleeing little time after. By May 1, 1972, Quang Tri had been completely subdued by the Northerners. But the advance towards the city of Hue would be temporarily held back by General No Quang Truong, who was able to hold the southern defense until July. Moment in which he decided to undertake a victorious counterattack, which would end only in September of that year. For its part, the second corps of the North Vietnamese Army, led by General Hong Min Tao, advanced through Laos, making its way to Khan Tum and Pleiku. The purpose of this attack was to break through to the sea from the cities taken to divide the South Vietnamese territory in two. On May 14, the battle for Khan Tum began with a huge deployment of heavy artillery and war tanks by the North Vietnamese Army. The conflict presented some advances for the Northerners, who were able to take half the city and destroy the airport through which the Southern Army received supplies. However, and despite the fact that the People's Army of Vietnam used all the resources available to it in the battle, on June 5 Khan Tum was the scene of the North Vietnamese withdrawal. The Communists in the North found themselves defenseless against the fierce bombardment of the American planes, who acted under the orders of Lt. Col. John Paul Van. Ultimately, the Third Corps of the Northern Army had a tempting goal, 
to capture the city of Unlock, which was traversed by Route 13 leading directly to Saigon. This corps not only had artillery and infantry regiments like the previous two, but also received the support of Viet Cong regiments and a battalion of combat sappers. In just a couple of days, the communist forces took Lok Nin, a city next to the main objective of the meeting. Although the troops in charge of defending in Lok had great combat experience, in a short time they were completely overwhelmed and outnumbered by the North Vietnamese army. While the southerners bravely resisted in in Lok, the U.S. Air Forces were in charge of bombing with their B-52S the different concentrations of the Northern Army. By June 1972, and with more than 90 days into the battle, the North Vietnamese forces gave up and decided to abandon the territory, ending the Easter Offensive. On the one hand, this event showed us that the Southern soldiers were fully capable of defending their territory against the Northern attack. However, it was the air presence of the United States that guaranteed victory over the Communists, revealing the great failure of the High Command of the Northern Army, to implement traditional war strategies and direct combat against the remnants of the U.S. military force, an army that had much more experience and resources for this type of tactics. As for the human losses left by the conflict, North Vietnam suffered the death or disappearance of around 40,000 soldiers, while another 60,000 were wounded. South Vietnam and the United States saw 13,500 soldiers killed or missing, while another 33,000 were wounded. However, the conflict led to the 1973 Paris Peace Accords, the North Vietnamese Army obtaining concessions from the United States. Among them, the withdrawal of the U.S. armed forces from the territory. Thanks to this and the land conquered during the battle, in 1975 the People's Army of Vietnam managed to win victory over those in the South, ending a 20-year conflict. We reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what would have happened to the Vietnam War if the Northern Army was victorious in this battle? Would it have meant an early end to the war or a re-entry of US forces? Leave your answer in the comment box below. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. And stay tuned for our next video.